everybody! Welcome back to Dakota Does Dressage. In this video, I'm just going to talk through a ride that I did back in November. So I'm not really doing anything in particular in this ride, but I'm putting into practice some advice that I got from a world champion Western dressage competitor. So how did I come about getting this advice, you might be wondering? I actually won it during a silent auction. So back in September, the Western Dressage Association of America held their world show and I, I didn't attend. I'd love to someday, either with a horse or just to watch, but uh, they do stream the show online for free. So definitely it's worth catching that if you're able to uh, this coming September. And then I just, from doing that, I saw that they were hosting an online silent auction. So I was checking out some of the things in the auction and I saw that you could bid on a virtual lesson. Um, I'm not gonna reveal the name of the person just because when I told them that I have a YouTube channel, they thought that's really cool, but they, they just weren't too keen on being featured on it. So I'm not gonna share who I got the advice from, but that's how I came into contact with this person. I won. Basically, we ended up just doing more of a consultation than an actual lesson, um, and I got advice from this person. So what I did was I, I sent them some videos of some schooling sessions that I had done with Dakota this year, and then um, basically everything you've seen on my YouTube channel, all of the tests that I've ridden over the summer, and gave them the scores and the, the feedback from the judges that I got. So the biggest takeaway uh, that I got from my conversation was that I should ride with a lighter seat. And that's what I'm trying to put into practice during this ride. It feels super weird. I don't feel at all in balance. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking down and trying to see like, okay, what's going on? Where are my feet? How does this look? How does this feel? Um, I think even with this bulky jacket, you can probably tell I'm like perched way forward and, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's like a great position. I feel like I'm kind of sticking my butt out there into the cantle and it was just odd, but it's something, you know, it's a brand new way of riding and it's something I, I'm just going to have to get used to and I, I'm sure I'll get better at it the more practice that I get. So, um, yeah, and I just set up some little ground poles just to kind of give him a little extra something to do, uh, something to focus on. So here I'm taking a break because it really was killing my hips and my thighs. But let me get into exactly why she was telling me to ride with a lighter seat. So she said that I was really putting a lot of weight into my seat and kind of sitting back on my pockets. And I think she's absolutely right. That's kind of the way I was taught to ride growing up. And then I'm gonna blame a little bit of it on my saddle because I ride in a reining saddle. And if you've ever noticed or like really looked at different types of Western saddles, um, reining saddles tend to have these longer seats with um, cantles that are a bit flatter. So I feel like it does naturally put you back further on the horse and then it does give you a bit of a chair seat. It pushes your leg out in front of you. So that kind of forces you to sit deeper with your seat. I'm also going to blame a little bit of why I was sitting that way on some of just the jargon that you hear um, around riding and in the horse industry. Like I've, I've been hearing, especially with classical dressage, plug in your seat bones, get your seat bones plugged into the saddle. And that to me, plugged in means sit deep, like get your seat bones down in the seat, plug them in. So I thought I was doing the right thing. And then I've also watched videos from professional dressage riders who are like, okay, to get the horse more on their hind end, you've got to sit, put your weight back there so they have to support your weight. So I was kind of thinking, all right, if I get way back here in the cant, he's gonna have to carry me and you know, take my weight with him like that. And it, it turns out that's not always the way things happen. So ride with a lighter seat 
add a tiny space between myself and the saddle. Basically, what I'm getting out of this is I, she said I need to displace more of my weight across my thighs, and that will help to lighten my seat, but I also need to stay light in my thigh contact, so I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to do that without basically standing up in my stirrups the entire time I'm riding and putting all of my weight into my stirrups, because I know you don't want to do that either. It's starting to make more sense. Again, this I shot this a couple of months ago, and um, I've been practicing with it, so I feel like it's coming along. My equitation is improving. He's starting to understand a little bit better too, but definitely during this ride, it's, it's all foreign territory, and it looks really awkward the way I'm, that I'm riding him. Okay, so some other tips were, he, he needs a more supple top line. Like, she picked up on that right away. That's something I've shared in my previous videos that we really need to work on, getting him more supple across his top line. Something that I think I've come to realize too is again an issue with my saddle. So number one, I've kind of established that it doesn't put me in a great position naturally. Um, it kind of forces my leg forward and brings my seat back and it gives me a chair seat. And it's putting my weight really right in the middle of his back. And Dakota's built a little downhill. Um, he is higher in his croup than he is in his withers. So he does have that working against him as far as trying to round through his spine and come over his top line. Um, it's harder for a horse that's built downhill to get their hind end underneath of them. Not impossible, but just a little harder. So uh, if I'm sitting kind of in, you know, I wouldn't say he sway backed at all, but if I'm sitting in kind of this hole that's naturally there in his top line because he is built a bit downhill. And remember, he's a senior horse. He doesn't have top line muscle like a really young fit horse. So I'm, I'm aware that there's an absence of muscle that I, I want to be there on his top line. So there's some bridging that's going on with my saddle. It doesn't fit him great. I do have a pad. The pad that I ride him in every ride is this diamond wool pad. It has pockets in it where I can put shims and I lost the shims. So <laughs> I've been searching for them everywhere. I have no idea where I put them, but I did buy replacement shims. They're not by Diamond Wool, um, but I did buy some replacement ones that I'm gonna pop in there for my next ride and see if that helps a little bit to help with some of the bridging. So I think he is tight over his top line because of the saddle fit and the way that my weight is being put into certain parts of the saddle um, is kind of amplifying that effect and unfortunately probably pain and discomfort on his part. So he's just protecting himself. He's just not willing to, to go there if it's gonna cause him discomfort. And you know what? He's being great about it. He could be like bucking and kicking and throwing a fit and trying to unseat me, but he's not. He's really trying hard for me. And I've had the discussion with Josh to see if maybe looking at some different saddles would be an option for us. I've heard barrel saddles are actually pretty great as far as putting you into a good position. So if you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments. I will say that I'm casually looking. If the right saddle were to come along that were in my price range, I would be interested, but I'm, I'm not like on a mission right now to go and find a saddle. She suggested that I ride a lot of transitions, up, down, and forward. Um, she said my halts are not forward enough, and this will help with our straightness as well. So I've noticed that when I do go to halt him, he definitely wants to stop on his front end. The impulsion issue too, um, she said, to get him trotting along, collect him, and then go forward again. So really work on the adjustability within his gates. And that's something I found that I'm having, again, a bit of trouble with because I don't want him to get confused. I want him to understand like what 
parts, what aids I'm using to ask for the variability in the gait. So how do I get him to go more forward um, and, and which body parts am I using for that? So I'm using primarily my lower leg. I'm doing some like kicking with my lower leg if I really need to or squeezing with my calves to get him to go more forward. And then to bring him back down, I'm using my thighs. So closing my thighs in on him to encourage him to stop or, or just become more collected. Um, but that means I'm also stiffening in my seat and I've got to learn how to ride with a more independent seat and keep my hips moving, but also be able to encourage him to slow, not slow down, but just become more collected. And again, he's, we're still fighting a little bit with the issue with the contact. So, oh, this is so hard, guys. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm up there spinning plates, like trying to figure out how to do all of these things and make it look like I'm basically doing nothing up there, right? That's what the pros look like. One exercise that this person suggested is riding a square. Find points in your arena, or you could set up cones if you want to, and ride a square. Half halt two times on the outside hind leg. If he leans into a turn, put more weight onto the outside stirrup. Use the inside leg to lift the shoulder and the inside rein to lift the shoulder. And I told her that he has a tendency to fall to the inside. Her suggestion was displacing my weight in my stirrups, and she called it stirrup stepping, um, where you're just putting a little extra weight here and there to kind of help them balance themselves around those turns. Uh, she also suggested another exercise we could do is measure out a circle and use cones. And so you're setting up these cones in a way that, like this is how you would ride a 20 meter circle and you count the number of strides between each cone so that when I'm doing my tests, I'll know kind of where those, the, I won't have cones set up in that configuration when I ride a test, I'll have my, my court set up the normal way, but I'll at least know like where those markers are in my head and how many strides I need to be hitting. Um, so I think that's a really good tip and something I'll have to, to ride one day and record that and share with everyone how that would look. Uh, she also suggested just more spiraling in and spiraling out. Um, and she said more out since he wants to go in. So she gave me a good tip for getting him to stop square um, and particularly in the trot. So she said in the trot, when the outside shoulder comes forward, to half halt and they will stop square. And she said, they'll do that every time, they'll stop square. But the half halt, right? Like this is a thing I think I've, I've searched for on YouTube a million times. There's no one way to do a half halt and your half halts will change depending on what gait you're doing or what you're asking the horse to do. And so I had her explain it a little bit more to me and she actually referred me to someone named Jane Savoy. Um, she said Jane has a half halt video that's really good to watch. So I'm gonna have to dig for that. I'm not sure if this is like a free video out on YouTube or if this is like on a DVD somewhere that I have to buy or, or what the deal is. But Jane Savoy, I will do some research. Half halt on outside rain for three seconds, then go forward. For contact, again, I really picked her brain about this, how to get him more comfortable with the contact. Her, her biggest piece of advice was get him to step into the contact. Uh, set the outside rein at a certain length, soften when he starts to round, and he will start to feel nicer under me. It'll feel more elastic, um, maybe like he's starting to go slower with his legs and it's just a little bit softer feeling. When he is more forward, the contact will come. In our transitions, as he goes forward, squeeze and release the inside rein to keep him round. 
with that, I, I want to thank you guys for watching me plunk around out here and ride him and see what we're doing. He looks pretty happy. And, and I think it's also improved my posting trot. Um, it definitely has me trotting more off of my thigh and my knee than off of my feet. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.